Good morning, everyone. This is Friday, uh, January 29th. And uh, I just currently am in uh, Charleston, South Carolina. The Lord has had me on a two week uh, mystery tour. One of these, I'll send you, I'll tell you where you need to be when you get there. So it's been an exciting time. And uh, actually I had some time with my family in Ohio and that was, that's always good. But um, the Lord gave me a message on Tuesday. And you know, I always like to have humor in my messages. This is not one of those messages. Um, in fact, I, to be honest with you, I didn't want to bring it. But you know, in the Shepherd's Rod 2020, the Lord said it was the year of the mouth. And, and out of, you know, the fullness of our heart, our mouth speaks. And the Lord was giving his people plenty of things to say. Of course, in 2020, we then had to cover our mouth, but that didn't stop us from speaking. And then uh, for 2021, the Lord said, this is a year of fire in the bones of the believers. And in that, he showed me that like Jeremiah, he, he gave, God gave Jeremiah some words to bring that he did not want to bring. And, but it was like fire burning in his bones until he could bring the word. And that's what I have felt um, on Tuesday when the Lord gave me this word. It, it's just, I didn't want to bring it. And I thought, well, I'll wait for the right time. See, my cowardly nature was coming out. I'll just wait for the right time. And so I, I talked to the Lord about it and he said, why are you testing me? Don't you trust me? Uh, yes, Lord, but I needed a sign. I needed something from him so I knew that this was him. He said, at the stroke of three today, you will hear of someone famous like an actor. You'll hear of his death. And okay. So this was early in the morning. So I was at my daughter's house and I was patiently waiting for three o'clock. And I left the room, went to the bathroom and came back. It was actually 3.07 is the time that it came across on my phone. And um, the actor's name is Bruce Kirby. Now he was not a like a famous like, um, you know, Elvis Presley or, you know, some real famous actor. But if you know me, you'd know I like Columbo movies, an old detective, you know, Peter Falk. And this man played a major role in the Columbo series, Bruce Kirby. So now he actually died on the 24th, but it wasn't announced until the 26th. So I'm like, oh my gosh, now I know I have to bring this word and I'm still praying about it because I really didn't want to bring it. So this morning, which is the 29th, the Lord gave me a dream within a dream. And in that dream, Bob was there and he was at unrest, okay? And I'm not gonna go into the whole dream, but I had left our, he was in the house and then he was at unrest. I left the house to do something and came back and my neighbor lady, whose last name is Shepherd, came and said, just come to my house and make this video. Paul Kane is waiting. He's at unrest. So I knew the Lord was saying, look, you have to do this now. And I started repenting because I realized that I was really expressing a cowardly nature. You know, I wasn't walking in faith. Faith would bring it regardless. Doubt and unbelief, cowardism, if there is such a word, a cowardice wouldn't. So I repented to the Lord and uh, of course he gave me scripture on that, you know, um, Revelation 
21.8 says, But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all the liars have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. And that is the second death. But verse 7 says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. That's where I want to be. So I said, Lord, um, you know... <laughs> I don't want to be a coward. And I repented of that. And he said, you can repent of cowardice, but you have to be obedient to correct it. So, because I know all of our sins are forgiven, but that is what concerned me. I was, at his death, I was forgiven my sin. So my cowardice attitude was forgiven. Yet I wasn't in, I wasn't, motivated by faith I turned to a coward so how do I repent of that because I needed this was something I needed to repent of and he said you know repent of it but then turn to um, obedience and that is what would correct it so in my obedience to the Lord which I should have done the other day immediately and not wavered um, is to brought this to bring this word so I'm going to bring it, um, and I don't even think I need to give any understanding to it. Uh, there were some parts as I, as I read it, I didn't understand. And that's what I was questioning the Lord, because I'm like, am I making this up? And so he confirmed my word with the announcement of that man's death. But it's an ode and a eulogy to America. So I'm going to read it exactly as he gave it to me. My hand is upon you to deliver the eulogy to America. America as you know it is dead and America is arising. Excuse me. America as you know it is dead and a new America is arising in this day. Life as you know it will not remain the same. All things are passing away so I can make a new world in the Americas. You see, what happened here affects the other nations around the globe. What has happened in the election is monumental and I am not going to let it rest. My hand is upon Donald John Trump to succeed in me. <clears throat> He is not a coward, nor is he faint of heart. He is strong as an ox, and I've prepared him to plow the unrighteous soil in America. Now here is what I'm saying. I am going to dictate to you a eulogy for the American government as it stands today. I want you to deliver it in a way Nancy Pelosi and her cronies shall hear it. It's an ode to the Republic. It's an ode to the life in Christ that will resurrect this nation, that will serve under God and trust in him only. Amen. The conscience of most politicians has been seared, and I'm giving them one last chance before I bring my hammer of justice down one at a time. The Ode to America. Ode to America, the land of the free and home of the brave. No longer does she serve me, says God. She serves the ungodly idols called money, political gain, and a monarchy. She serves the unrighteous nerve center of the people and claims to see, serve the poor and needy. She is corrupt and murders my children, then holds meetings in secret to desecrate my name. She calls holy what I deem unholy, and unholy what I deem holy. She has raised her fist in my face while swearing allegiance to the flag. She has murdered my children and sacrificed their blood in the name of self-righteousness. The unrighteous judges and politicians are held responsible and deemed guilty in my court of justice. Here, in God's court, there is no recuse from guilt. 
the scorned and downtrodden need help to recover. But you are in your warm and cozy mansions, sipping wine and hot toddies while my children are running naked in the streets. You have desecrated a land I have called holy. I chose America to serve me, not a political faction. Now I say to you today, the unholy politicians of America, those who have brought death and decay to her soil, those who have obstructed my life, those who have taken my name in vain, I say to you, beware the Ides of March, for you show your show of cowardice is coming to an end. You shall see in the days to come, my wrath and my fury spilled out to overflowing in Washington, D.C., and it will not stop there. My hand is not weakened, nor is my arm short, that it cannot reach all those involved in the election fraud. I'm giving you one chance to come clean and turn this nation back to righteousness before I lower the boom in D.C. Come clean, Pelosi. Come clean, Chuck Schumer. And come clean, Joe Biden. You three have brought America to ruin, and you three are at the top of the gallows. I say, come clean or else. This is a tipping point and a turning point for this nation. Then the Lord said to me, he said, I'm holding court this day and placing your case on top. You go first and others follow. And I believe he meant bringing this word. This is the boldness of Acts 2 and the whole book of Acts that you've prayed about. Do not fear, only obey. So that is the word that I wanted to bring to you today. Um, it's a very solemn word. I believe it is a true word of the Lord. Um, like I said, I, I didn't even recognize that, that I was testing him. I was asking for a confirmation that I was hearing him clearly. Um, I believe the prophets have been hearing clear and God has uh, God is in control of all of this. And it's not, it's far greater than just the election fraud. Okay, I wanna say that it's far greater than election fraud. Um, the roots go very deep and God knows that, you know, when, he cursed the fig tree. It didn't die immediately, but it began at the root, and that's where it died. When when they come, when he and the disciples come past that same fig tree, I think it was the following day. It was withered and dried up, and it but it started at the roots. And I believe that that is what God is doing right now. Um, when something, when God gives a word through his prophets. We need to weigh that word. I never want to give a word unless I know that God has spoken it. He has, He told me many, many years ago, you will speak my word in spirit and truth by love. You speak it nothing more and nothing less. And that's why many times I will read what he has given me because I don't want to um, vary from that. Now, sometimes I don't have full understanding of what he said. In fact, in this, you know, I, there's some phrases here that he used that I didn't have understanding of. In fact, my son-in-law gave me better understanding, especially about the monarchy. But um, God, I believe, has been testing the hearts of his prophets. Some have I'm going to say coward, not that they were a coward, but they cowered. They, um, they repented for the word they brought. Now, being around family and some friends on this little trip, I was asked about this and, and I said, I can't, I can't repent for a word that I know with all my heart that the Lord has given me. Um, the Lord proves his word, okay? And sometimes it takes time. 
for it to come to pass. But I truly believe this word that the Lord gave me today or a few days ago, it is a word of the Lord and it will come to pass. What that's going to look like, I don't know. But time will tell and God is on the throne. He has not left us. He has not forsaken us. I believe he's calling um, the big names out. They need to come out. They need to show their face and, <clears throat> and repent. And God loves us so much that he gives us time to do that. So will it affect other people? Absolutely. But uh, he is on the throne and he knows what he's doing. Our part is to hear him to trust him and to believe him, obey him. I know on um, on election day, the thing he said to me, you know, he woke me that morning and he said, let not your heart be troubled. Pronounce victory, okay? And then he said, pray that my people vote according to my will. And I believe that they did. And, um, I have continued to pronounce victory, and I believe that God is the victor, okay? And we need to be victorious in him, and we are and we will continue to be. So I bless you with this word, and um, I need to post it also on our website. And um, there's so many other things that I want to share with you, but that is what it's going to be today. I know that um, there's great things that are going to take place in our lives if we are faithful and if you turn to that coward nature like I did you know repent and turn back to God and uh, obey him obey him see this wasn't so difficult I just didn't want to do it okay I love you guys I will see you and talk with you again soon blessings